I, I kind of, I do feel like the the notion that the artifacts of music are music, like the notion that records are music, uh, is kind of insane, you know, because that's such a small fraction of what people's interaction with music has been historically. And for a while, the music business was a synonym for the record business. Like if you talked about the music business, you were principally talking about the record business in the 70s, 80s, 90s. That was it. That was the whole music business. Now, physical sales of records and CDs are trivial in significance. And the music business as an, as a, like an oligopoly doesn't really exist. As businesses become less profitable and, and become unprofitable, they close down, right? It's not that there's an infinite barrel of money that the record industry can just lose at forever. You're just going to have a very small number of record companies. And those record companies are going to, are, are going to be for a specialty market, like uh, an independent record label that sells a certain type of music and knows that audience and knows that music and is run by aficionados and is run by people who are passionate about it will always be a valuable resource. There's a record label in Chicago called Numero Group that does reissues of old, obscure records that have been mostly discovered by the DJ community for people looking for interesting, odd records to play. They find these weird records that, you know, maybe didn't get much of a life in their initial incarnation, but somebody stumbled across this record. So the Numero Group re-releases these records, but they do it in a very nice way. They have a nice package. They make it so that you feel like you're buying a piece of... Uh, of history. You're buying some information about this band you didn't know about. You're not just getting the abstracted sounds, which is what you get on the internet. You get you just get the abstracted sound. From when you buy a record by the Numero Group, you get a uh, like a, an encapsulation of the history of this thing, this record that you otherwise would never have known about. So they're doing it the right way. That record label is going to survive, and and they're serving a they're serving a purpose, right? Big record labels, Elektra, Warner Brothers, Sony, whatever, where they just spray shit into the mass market and hope some of it ends up in a beer commercial and hope some of it ends up on the Super Bowl and hope some of it ends up, you know, some chick pops her tits out to it in a movie. Like, they're just spraying and hoping. They're making the same kind of, like, retarded mistakes that got them fucked up in the first place. The people who are going to survive are the people who are servicing rabid music fans who want a specific thing out of their relationship with music and they can only get that from a record label that understands them and also has that special relationship with music a respectful appreciative re relationship with music yeah it used to be that the big companies had uh, a hammerlock on distribution as more and more people realized that they could go to independent record stores and they could find a variety of different stuff that wasn't available in the mainstream that was the thing that opened the door. That got people more and more involved in their personal quest for finding music that they liked. Now, I still think record stores are valuable. And I think record stores are valuable because there isn't any other place where you can hear music and talk about music and be driven to, a, to, a, to something else in real time in a, in a personal human interchange. You know, There are a lot of like sort of online resources where you can hear little snippets of music and ha have enter into conversations and read about things those are useful those are kind of like a public library they're useful in that you can do some research there or whatever but to have like to, to walk into a store and say you know there are so many albums by the fall which is a good one i've never heard the fall right you, there's a guy in every record store who's a big Fall fan. Every single record store has one, right? And he'll be able to say, okay, here, let me give you three records. I'll play a little bit of each of these three. You're going to love some of it, and you're going to want to buy one of these three records. You know? And you can't do that in any, other, in any other environment. There's really no other way to do that. And, or like you, there are record stores that specialize in certain tastes, or there's somebody in each record store that's into a certain kind of thing. And going to someone who's actually... Like got a lot of experience and has a lot of time on his hands and is exposed to the whole spectrum of music, and having that person give you recommendations is way, way more important than seeing advertisements or videos or whatever bullshit.